All right, let's talk about this uh, NXT show. We had Solo Sokoa, Roderick Strong, North American Championship qualifying match. And Solo Sokoa won the match. It was a pretty good match. They both look good. It's Roderick Strong. You're not going to have a bad match. And so Solo Sokoa is now in that ladder match. We had some of the dumbest, most horrifically acted segments backstage with Indy Hartwell and Persia Parada. Although one of them actually was so bad, it was good, which we'll get to. But they're, uh, they're arguing backstage. See, they had a match last week when they were friends. They're still friends. They're, they're frenemies, as they call them. And uh, they, they're hanging out still, uh, acting poorly. So there's going to be a match later. Tony D'Angelo faced Dexter Loomis. And Tony goes for the crowbar. Indy grabs the crowbar. And then uh, what's-her-face uh, Persia grabs the crowbar from Indy. And then she has a tug-of-war with Tony D'Angelo. Yeah, Tony D'Angelo and uh, Persia Pratt had a tug-of-war. It took him a while to win, and then the crowbar flies into Dexter Loomis's face, right in the middle of the ring, which the referee somehow does not see. You and, like that, uh, what's that little spin from the referee pirouette? Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> and so uh, that was the end, and then obviously, you know, Dexter's very angry, as we'll get to later. We had uh, Electra Lopez beating Fallon Henley. I have no idea how Fallon Henley is not on the main roster already. Same with the uh, the lady that uh, Robert Stone's talking to. I mean, ain't going to be long in developmental, brother. Mark my words. We had um, Braun Breaker and Robert Roode. Listen, I don't like to be that guy. Okay? I don't. Nobody cared about this match. I don't, if I get, if I hear, if you, I don't want to hear one person, whether it's on the chat, DJ Bantam, or whether it's on YouTube, you can do it on YouTube because comments are stupid there anyway. But like, I do not want to hear that the crowd was into this match because this happens all the time in AEW. Like every now and then it'll be a match on AEW with no heat. And I'll have these, these, you cannot say one negative thing about AEW. Even if you're paid by Tony Khan, you can't say one negative thing about AEW or like, you know, you're going to get it. Oh, there was, what are you talking about? There was no heat. Brother, there was no heat, okay? And there was no heat for this match. Yes, at the very, in the very last minute or two, when they did some near falls, they got the obligatory this is awesome chant. But for 90% of this match, nobody cared. Why? Well, I mean, as an honest man here, nobody was going to care about Braun Breaker and Robert Roode in the first place. But brother... You did no favors by beating Robert Roode in the middle of the ring on Raw by Dominic Mysterio. Pinned in the middle, clean. No interference, no Braun Breaker, Rick Steiner did nothing. He just got pinned in the middle of the ring. How could we, if we couldn't care before, how could we possibly care now? Well, nobody did. It's a dead match with Braun Breaker. He pins Robert Roode. Robert Roode, a former NXT champion for over a year. But bro, they did not care one bit about this guy. Do you realize that that, that aside from the match where uh, Ziggler won the three-way and won the title, neither Rude or Ziggler have won a single match in like 50 appearances on this show? Oh, it wasn't 50, Brian. It was only, you know, six. Whatever. No one cared. So anyway, then we move on to uh, Grayson Waller and a kid. And uh, Grayson Waller beat this kid. And he is going on to the North American Championship qualifying match. And uh, afterwards, Carmelo Hayes gets in the ring. And he announces there's there's one spot left in a match he signed and, like, he's got complete creative control of. So he goes, you know what? We're going to have a a match with all the losers next week. This is the term they use. All the losers are going to have a match. This is just like booking uh, the, the multi-person tag matches on Raw and SmackDown. All the losers are going to be in a match. We'll see which one of you is the most overachieving loser, and you'll get into the uh, the North American title match. You want to put money on Cameron Grimes? In Listen, that, uh, let me talk about equation. Cameron Grimes. All right. They had a video package on this show with Cameron Grimes. And Cameron Grimes talks about how last week he was really upset because he had no path to WrestleMania. And how his father, he loved his father. They were super close. They watched wrestling. They were involved in wrestling. And and the last thing he said, the last thing I told my father was that I signed with NXT and I'm going to be a champion. 
And he goes, it's been three years, and look at this. I don't even have a path to WrestleMania. And they got pictures of him and his dad and, like, the whole shebang. And I watched this, and uh, as, as I'm sure many of you are, are well aware, there have been many, many angles in wrestling history that uh, have been built around people who have actually died, okay? And uh, probably the most infamous is uh, when Randy Orton did that promo about how, you know, Eddie Guerrero is in hell. After Eddie Guerrero had shoot legitimately died, he's doing a promo about how Eddie Guerrero is, is residing in the afterlife in hell. This did not work, did not get over. People hated it. And the thing is, you know, it's, it's wrestling. And, uh, and you are supposed to tell stories. And it's supposed to, you know, be real, even though it's not. And so I am not against using a real tragedy in a person's life to tell a story. But, number one, you know, I don't know Cameron Grimes' father, but my guess would be that Cameron Grimes' father would have been all right being part of an NXT storyline, you know, after he passed away. But on top of that... If you're going to do the storyline where my father died, I made him a promise. And you're going to pay it off by having Cameron Grimes win the match next week, go to WrestleMania weekend, win the ladder match, and become the NXT North American champion, and succeed and make his his deceased father happy, fine! But brother, if they screw this up, I don't expect him to lose. I do expect him to be in the match. But there's still that part of me that thinks, uh, you know, they're going to do something and he's not going to win and, you know, someone else. Bro, don't do that stuff. Like, I know. I want to believe it. you, too. I want to don't believe do you. Don't do it. But I could see them putting a kid in there. And I just I and, and have him be sad and be down on his luck and have all of this money. But I failed my father to build it into another match that he has on that show. That wouldn't surprise me at all. I think it's a waste of what they're doing, obviously, because... Again, I would not invoke this stuff unless, again, you got a really good story for it. And I, I just, we'll see. We'll Here's see the thing. But to, to cut to the chase, because I ramble forever, don't do a storyline involving somebody who has passed away to get heat, okay? Don't ever do that. It we never, see. it never, ever works. If you want to use this, if you want to use somebody who has passed away in a storyline to to give everybody a happy ending and, and the person whose father passed away is crying in the ring because he did it for his father, that's fine. That's okay. But don't waste this storyline and then screw Cameron Grimes. That never, wor- it ne- name one time that has ever worked where you've used someone who's passed away to get heat and then, like, you you didn't pay it off and, like, the person... Name one time that's ever worked, ever. Look, when does any time somebody... I mean, honestly, depending on who the situation is as far as who's passed away, as far as using heat, whether it's ever it ever works at all. Because especially in this day and age, you got to be really careful about it. I mean, look, the Charlotte thing, and that's the problem, too, with a lot of this, is there you cannot... Their track record is awful. Wrestling's track record in general is awful, but their track record with any of this sort of stuff, with invoking anybody's name that has passed away, is usually awful, with the exception of Paul Bearer, who, again, because everybody will always talk about, well, this person wouldn't have minded it, Eddie wouldn't have minded it, this person wouldn't have minded it, and it's like, you don't know that, they've passed away, maybe they wouldn't, as much as they loved wrestling, as much as they dedicated their lives for wrestling, maybe they didn't want to do that, and they wouldn't like that. Now, Paul Bearer, I guess he's one of the exceptions that everybody said to a person, if you use him in something, it'll be fine. But real life, whatever, I just, that stuff being brought in and being, again, if this isn't even, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I just, I don't have any confidence at all in this. Well, believe it or not, I I actually have confidence. I think he's going to win next week, and I think he's going to win the championship at WrestleMania weekend. It is a preemptive a bout of anger at the idea that this could be screwed up. Because when I watched it, I thought, this is this is what makes me mad. When I see something and it's like, this is impossible to screw up. But they like, do. That's the point. Yeah. You have to be like at a level of incompetence that is inconceivable to me to screw up this thing with Cameron Grimes. Do I do I have one hundred percent faith they're gonna do it right? Of course not. But like it's so unscrew upable that you have to go out of your way to like be horrible at your job to to screw this thing up right here. Anyway, the Creed brothers beat the Grizzled Young Vets. It's fine. It wasn't long. 
Nobody died. That's a positive. <laughs> Gunther and Duke Hudson was a 10 on the granny scale. This was like a 100-star match. Oh, my God. Duke Hudson, I don't have time to talk about. I'll talk about it on the Brian and Vinny show, the the segment that they did with Dexter Loomis drawing. But uh, it sets up <laughs> this match with Gunther and Duke Hudson. And, uh, bro, this did not have a lack of heat. They start wrestling at about two minutes in. Gunther hits him with this chop. And uh, and you could hear it in in uh, Oregon. These fans they start going nuts. They they chanted what you said at the beginning of the show, which is an FCC violation. They're going out of their minds. And these dudes they're like the same size. And everyone's used to like you know Walter beating up these little dudes. But how here's two dudes about the same size, and they're Whoa. beating the crap out of each other. But same height. <laughs> Gunther is just double beating the crap out of poor Duke Hudson. And in the finish, he throws him in the corner. He goes, this is for you, Persia. He gives this guy two thunderous chops. He kicks him right in the face, and then he power bombs him and pins him. Oh, my God. This turned the whole show around for me. Like, if I ever hated NXT, I apologize for everything I ever said about him. I'd almost forgive screwing up Cameron Grimes. Almost! Not quite. <laughs> But that man, this fact, match was fantastic. That and the fact that his woman was the one who got him into that mix oh, is even better. <laughs> this was great. And then it was Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray beating Wendy Chu and Dakota Kai. And then in the funniest thing ever, I'm sure like one of uh, uh, either JC or, or whatever, I can never get their name. Gigi. Gigi and JC. Gigi, Joel, Joel and JC, Jane, whatever. One of them's got to be hurt because uh, Io and Kaylee win. And then they're like, we're going to cash in. But we don't care about these tag belts. We want the uh, championship match at uh, whatever to be a four-way singles match for the NXT title. Which, for some reason, makes JC and GG mad. So maybe they're not hurt because there was a brawl. But anyway, that was the show. Back in a moment, Observer Live. So one last thing about this this NXT main event thing. It was like... <laughs> it was so wacky. Because the whole storyline is uh, GG and JC, they hate all these teams. So they don't want to, to defend these uh, these titles at uh, over WrestleMania weekend. And uh, so EO and Kaylee win. And then they just like bury the tag titles. They're like, we don't want these belts. We're going to uh, we're going to cash in and the match with uh, with Mandy and and uh, and what's her name is going to be a it's going to be a four way now. Cora Jade. So it's Cora Mandy, Jade. Mandy, Cora Jade, EO and uh, Kaylee Ray. It's now a four way. So for some reason, this makes uh, Gigi and JC angry. That now they don't have to worry about defending their titles. So they help attack the uh, Kaylee Ray and Shirai. And then, and then who should run down to make the save but Cora Jade, who was guaranteed a singles match over WrestleMania weekend. But now she's in a four-way, whereas they say her chances of winning are now only 25%. But bro, she's happy as a clam. She's running wild and running off all the heels, and she's happy as can be. I'm like, shouldn't JC and uh, Gigi be happy and Cora should be angry? Instead, it's the other way around. They're angry, and Cora's totally happy being in a four-way now for this title. So anyway, whatevs, dude. I don't book this show. Rob Bartlett is the man. He tried the best he can. Vince on the new woo! What Rob Biden's gonna do to you? Vinny V, Happy Corbin, and Bartlett in a three way. Oh. Here comes the commentator, Rob Bartlett. He's a great imitator of Vince McMahon. Rob, you're the love of my life. Come back to Monday Night Raw and be my wife. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. Is this Rob Bartlett? Guilty as ch- Hey! Oh, look who's here on the show, everybody! There's a star here. Rob, hey, Rob Bartlett is joining us here today. How you doing, Rob? I don't know what to say about this. To actually be proposed to in song was a beautiful thing. <laughs> I couldn't really do much of an impression of him other than the, the tone of the voice, you know? <laughs> he still got it. <laughs> He still got it. I think I had the wrong guy. Well, what, what did you learn about the the Rob Bartlett that you you uh, you checked out? He was an explorer way back when. That's not him. <laughs> well, I don't know. He was born August fifteenth, eighteen seventy five. 
and so died you, April 28, 1946. He died in, okay, but you thought he might be on the show this week. Well, I couldn't figure out why you guys picked him. Here you go to the Brian and Vinnie Mac Cleary Memorial Hall of Awesome. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hey. Aye, 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 aye. Well, there he goes. Very aye. prestigious. You get nothing. You've warmed the cockles of my heart. I have warm cockles now. And um, Lucky fella. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm moist. I'll just say that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm moist. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.